Morning. I'm Paul Hiltz. I'm the president and CEO here at NCH in Naples, and I'm very, very pleased to be joined by two of our community leaders. Mayor Teresa Heitman, welcome. We're so pleased that you're here. Thank you. John Kling, Chief Nursing Officer here at NCH, and we're here for a uh, community virtual town hall. And uh, Mayor, we, we welcome you. You had a busy week between the storm and uh, more COVID news but we appreciate you taking time from the schedule. You've been a great partner throughout this whole thing and we welcome you. Well, thank you. Um, actually, I am very appreciative of you and the fact that you are willing to take on an initiative within the community. That's the most important thing is this has been a collaboration, uh, not just with uh, Naples Community Hospital and the city of Naples, but with the community, the Naples Daily News, and at large, and that's important because really that's what we're here to talk about and, and, and to emphasize is safety. And I'll just tell you, um, I wanna really thank you for this opportunity as mayor. Uh, you know, I'm married with three kids and they grew up here. I was on city council for eight years and just recently, well, we had our six months on um, council. We have a new council and um, I'm very happy and very honored and very humbled to serve this community and safety and health is a priority for myself and this council. Well, uh, again, I, one of the things I've learned in living here in Naples uh, for just one year, but this is a great community. And I think after we get through this pandemic, we're gonna look back and find that Naples did better than most cities because of the collaboration because of the community uh, participation in joining together to do what we can to defeat COVID. So thank you again. And we thought we would introduce John Kling, who is the chief nursing officer here and who has been uh, the chairperson for our COVID response team to give us an update on you know, the news reports, John, yesterday and today, these last couple of days, uh, somewhat alarming from around the, the country, but can you give us the latest with what's going on here in our community and how we're doing. Great. Thank you, Paul and Mayor Ivan, for allowing me to participate with you all. Uh, really kind of prepared a few of our talking points from the questions we received. And we'll start with um, um, our current trend. So uh, we have today we have 45 patients in our healthcare system. If you look at that back from September 29th, we had our lowest point of 10. So that we have a 400% increase in COVID. However, only 9% of our hospital census is COVID today. So I'd like to thank again, Mayor Heitman and Paul for you know, continuing to focus on the right things. And that's wearing a mask, uh, social distancing whenever possible, good hand hygiene. It's really, it's gonna be what's gonna help us get through this process. So um, a lot of questions we receive as well as around our visitation policy and what are you doing around visitation policy? And right now we're continuing to follow our uh, current visitation policy, and that is from nine to six, we allow one, sometimes two, depending on the area you're in, uh, visitation. Uh, we, I do want to stress that we do have a strong uh, policy that visitors must wear a mask at all times. We do restrict movement in our healthcare system to avoid any exposures to the visitors, the patients, and our staff. And so we are continuing to watch that. And the question we get a lot is, will you stop visitation if, if the trend continues to go the way it is going? And right now, um, we are looking at that daily, hourly almost, and if it gets to the point, we, we may do that again in the future, but today we're not planning on doing that. Um, really, I just wanna kind of focus on um, thanking our team and what they have done. And Paul mentioned that Naples is really, not just NCH, but Naples, Collier County, Southwest Florida, uh, we believe has kind of really stepped up and come together in this pandemic that really is unprecedented in, our, in my lifetime, in most of our lifetimes, and uh, done a really great job. So uh, there's too many people to thank, but um, uh, our entire clinical team, our support team, the mayor and her and her team, uh, the residents of Naples and Cuyahoga County, I think everybody has really put the, our population health at the forefront of what we do. And you know, our statistics are, can, can outshine many of the country and, uh, 21 percent less uh, mortality risk in our critical care units. Um, our mortality rate is less than the state and national level. 
Um, our hospital admission rate is really in line with the state admission rate of 7%. Um, we are really do a great job of, of caring for our patients. Our length of stay is about 20% lower than expected length of stay for COVID-19 patients. Can go on and on, but those statistics really kind of lend to the fact that your healthcare system uh, has done um, a, a very good job in partnering with our community and doing evidence-based care to protect and care for our, our patients. Hey, John, can I just interject and ask you a question? One of the things I'm really proud of that you and your team have done is protecting the patients and protecting the staff from the spread of this disease once someone comes into the hospital. Can you give us mm -hmm. the update on that? So we've had um, a total of two employees that have what we call an occupational exposure or a risk or exposure from a patient. Uh, we had one back in March, and back then that's when we changed our policy to wearing a mask and our protection on all patient contacts. And we do have, that's why we really, for our visitation, we want to make sure that you all understand wearing a mask has proven by our statistics with antibodies and infection rates to uh, strongly or greatly reduce the risk of COVID-19 exposure and getting that. Um, we had a, a one employee that uh, recently had an occupational exposure, but uh, did not wear their protection as our policy required. So, uh, and that's one thing I wanted to talk about here today is the, the COVID pandemic fatigue is real. So as, as this continues to drive on, that's why it's important that Mayor Hyman and Paul and I are our local leaders in, um, and you as our constituents continue to do the right thing and that's wear the mask because um, when people start getting relaxed or uh, you know, lazy is probably not the right word, but get relaxed, that's when those risks for exposures can increase. So we get a lot of um, questions about, do you think there'll be a second surge? Well, we are seeing a surge now, as I mentioned when I opened up. However, we know from our, our, our outcomes, our data from the research that if you do those wearing a mask, washing your hands, distancing as much as possible when they're able to, we can reduce that and continue to live our lives as normally as possible with this pandemic. How normal is this mask? But you know, we're all healthy and we're able to take care of our patients and our seeing each other. So, but I guess I would just say that that's really what kind of led that kind of success around protecting patients from other infected patients, protecting the state really led to this initiative that the mayor you know, was interested in, which was the all heroes wear masks. And you see these ads and you hear us talk about it. It's only because we think that that has been a big piece of keeping our team and our patients safe. So thanks uh, for your leadership, both of you, on that. Just a few more things that I hand it back over to Mayor Heitman and Paul is um, we have a lot of convalescent plasma. People say, how are you with the convalescent plasma supply? Thanks to you all and your generous donations, uh, we have a strong supply of that. And we continue to get that on a daily basis when it's needed for our patients. Uh, we do have a, a, a good supply of remdesivir, which is a medication, IV medication that we use for COVID-19. And uh, the question of the week now is the vaccine. And most of you all, if, not, if you haven't heard, uh, uh, there's a Pfizer announced the vaccine that will be coming to the market soon. Um, this was, uh, we, we have known this has been in play for months and we have prepared for months on uh, the ability for us, if the Department of Health and Human Services Grandstand State, we would like to be an administrator locally of the vaccine for Naples and Cuyahoga County. We do not know if we have had that. Uh, Paul and our organization have sent letters to the Florida Hospital Association, Governor DeSantis, uh, stating our readiness and desire to be a community leader uh, in population health to be an administrator. So um, we have purchased the deep freezers, the storage, it needs to be stored in uh, negative 60 degrees Celsius. Our two freezers that are large volume freezers will be installed on Monday. We've had them in our warehouse for almost a little over two months as we want to make sure we were prepared from a, uh, if there was a supply and demand issue that we weren't going to be caught in those crosshairs. And those will be installed on Monday. And um, if and when that's released and we're granted that, we were going to we'll announce to the public um, how that process will work. We know that it's going to be in a phased approach. Uh, Department of Health and Human Services and uh, the Florida Department of Health will delineate how that is being administered and we will share that as we know more. So uh, again, your healthcare system that we were privileged to help to, to manage and take care of for your, for your benefit is prepared for that and looking forward to sharing that in future upcoming town halls. So as I mentioned, we're, we're you know, 
where we get, I get questioned a lot is, well, how are you, what are you gonna do if the search comes? And the answer is we're gonna do what we've always done. We know how to take care of the patients. We have a search plan in place if we get to the point where there's capacity issues. Uh, it's on our website. You can go to our um, nchmb.org and look at our COVID pandemic website. And it's, it's all there, all 81 pages of it. It's, it's a really kind of a dry read, but, um, and we're gonna continue to do the right thing. And I think that's a good thing because our outcomes have shown that uh, our care has been extraordinary and, um, and we thank you for your support. Oh. Well, you've done a great job leading this. And again, we'll continue the partnerships all, all over the place. And I, I think, I guess one of the things that we'll be looking for, John, is that our first spike happened roughly two or three weeks after the 4th of July, right? Halloween was another big area or a, a big holiday where people gathered in the 14 days from that's, you know, uh, upon us here uh, very soon. So I guess we'll be watching that, right? And what are your thoughts going forward for the next few weeks? Right, so one of the big things with that too was when the Cuyahoga County Public Schools went back to school, would we see a surge in pediatric admissions? And we've only had two pediatric admissions since the start of school, uh, no mortalities, and um, uh, we haven't seen an increase in COVID presentations to our emergency department for pediatrics. Uh, we have seen some um, spike in pediatrics for the community and the primary care for pediatric offices. But as we look for, and so I think the, uh, the Thank Dr. Patton and the Cairo County Public School System for the Yoma's work they did around the safety of our children. Mm -hmm. Really amazing work. And um, NCH was lucky enough to be part at the table with some of our local pediatricians. And I do want to recognize Dr. O'Malley, he's a cardiac pedi pediatrician, and he's a chair of pediatrics at NCH uh, for his work in keeping our children safe. As we see the in, in incidents like school starting or 4th of July or Halloween, um, and with the uh, return of our seasonal residents, we want to make sure that the message is do the right thing, be smart, do the mask, et cetera. So we do reverse those, you know, reduce that mitigation of exposure to, and spread of COVID. So that the vaccine is gonna come out. We're gonna do the right thing as, as a health organization and community. And if we do those right things, we'll be okay. So Mayor, it sounds like the recommendations are gonna be for the vaccine is that the first responders and frontline caregivers would be first in line for the vaccine, right, John? I'm guessing that there's a fair amount of excitement about that for the first responders. Absolutely. Uh, as we were told by your staff or some of the medical staff that the vaccine was um, you know, one of the important things that we, the next step that we needed to go to besides you know, the social distancing and the good hygiene. So we look forward to that. I think it will give the community that sense of security. Uh, so we uh, look forward to the distribution of those vaccines, especially to our first responders. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're open for questions now and people can put questions in. Is that right, Sean? Yes, under the Q&A function at the bottom of their screens. And our, one of our first questions is, when do you see allowing volunteers to come back to the hospitals? Uh, that's been, a, so the question was, when do we see volunteers coming back to the hospitals? I, I know it, your COVID team has talked about that, John, mm -hmm. and they're looking for a number of different data points to make that a safe uh, decision, right? Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, so we have had a few of our uh, volunteers already come back in key areas. Uh, what we do is, you know, with, most of our volunteers are, are retired and, and, and a more of a, a higher risk population. So we take every single request uh, per department and look at that from a safety perspective. And um, again, once we have a vaccine in place and or a more um, lower rates, we'll, we'll expand that. But right now we're still limiting our um, process for having uh, volunteers here. And uh, we, We've always taken over abundance of caution with what we've done for the safety of our staff and our, and our patients. So, anyway, so I was just going to say, John, um, thank you uh, for letting me speak about volunteers because uh, the city also um, functions and serves this community with volunteers. So we're looking forward also to being able to bring back our volunteers to um, help out in the community. Uh, not only do they assist us in uh, important duties, but it also um, is a good, um, healthy thing and mentally um, good for 
uh, us to continue that volunteering. So I look forward to us moving towards those um, opening up volunteers. You know, Mayor, it's, it's been really gratifying because even though people can't physically be here to help, uh, we've received close to 40,000 meals uh, donated from people in Naples to the NCH healthcare system for the caregivers. And even though those people can't be here physically, that has really made a big, big difference to the frontline caregivers. And it's, it says a lot about the town. Well, if I might, um, I think it's a great time to say thank you to those businesses and to those restaurants um, for not being selfish, but for looking out for the community in more ways than one, trying to provide the, um, food for the first responders here at the hospital and other areas, um, plus making sure that they have safe businesses and restaurants uh, during this time so that the community knows we're safe. So, Absolutely. Thank you, thank you for that. What we started with, where are we now, and what happens if we have a surge? Can we can we expand? So in the beginning of the pandemic, it was um, a large impact on our our ICU uh, units up in New York City and other areas in the country. Um, we really have only as of our forty five patients, only five of those are in critical care today. We have good ICU capacity, and as I mentioned. Uh, in the beginning of this pandemic, Paul, it gave us the leeway to really purchase a lot of ventilators in preparation for the need if necessary. Uh, that hasn't come to fruition. And we're actually able to share some of our ventilators with other community healthcare systems um, that they were having a hard time getting them. So again, that was one good thing. And say we only have one uh, patient on the ventilator who was COVID positive. So we're seeing that 90 to 95% of our patients are on our floors, which are not critical care units and being discharged home safely. And then, John, to, in terms of just overall bed capacity, I know you have a surge plan. We, we've got, I think we started with 715 beds, mm -hmm. but if we needed to go to 1,000 beds, do you have a plan for that too? Correct. And as I mentioned on our website, nchmd.org, uh, our surge and pandemic plan is on there. And if we got to uh, you know, 90, 95% bed capacity, uh, we have processes and plans in place to expand up to 1,000 beds. And, or more needed. Hopefully we don't get to that. Um, this is why we want to stress doing the right thing for each other. Thank you for that. Next question is, can you explain what the All Heroes Wear a Mask campaign is? And was that in response to the increased numbers? Are we seeing a big number of increases? So the All Heroes Wear a Mask, I'll let Mayor Heitman because we think this is one of the really unique things uh, going on in the United States right now. We're at a city and a health system have come together. So Mayor, you had a lot to do with this. Well, I would say that um, actually you have a great team um, that uh, does publicity for your hospital, which is um, incredible. And you allowed us to come into this All Heroes Wear Mask. And this initiative was really just to show the re personal responsibility for each and every one of us, for our leaders, to show that wearing a mask is simply um, an easy thing to do to make sure that we are safe in our community and that our uh, part-time residents feel comfortable that we are safe to come, that, to come back to Naples. Our visitors feel safe. We have a safe hospital. If you do get ill, you have excellent care through uh, the leadership of Naples Community Hospital, through John, the nursing staff that support the physicians so um, please, the initiative is about making sure that we are personally responsible for ourselves and to others. And the message can't um, be said enough over and over just so we don't get complacent and we can get through these times before people are vaccine and we do see the trending of COVID cases going down. So it's a safe campaign. It's a safety initiative and a partnership. Thank you for that. And we have another question, I think. Yes, um, given the rising number of hospitalizations, when might we see or would we see a um, reporting again of bed capacity and ventilator usage? And um, what, where are we at with that today? So, um, we can add the uh, bed capacity anytime, so we'll look at that. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, I think, our, our, as I mentioned before, we have a good capacity today. So 
Uh, we know a lot more than we did back in March and more than we did in July. And as we continue to understand this pandemic, our treatment protocols are improving. So we'll watch that very closely. So thank you for that feedback. And I'll take it back to our COVID leadership team and we'll get back to you all. One of the neat benefits, John, of our relationship with the Mayo Clinic is that you and your team have been able to tap into the world experts in infectious diseases at Mayo, correct? Correct. And you connect with them, what, every week or two? Every week. Every week, so. And so we're able to keep up, and I, I'm sure you picked up some learnings through this okay. since the beginning of this. Yeah, you know, as you all should be uh, proud that your community healthcare system is also an academic and research-oriented uh, uh, organization as well. We're a part of nine research clinical trials around COVID-19. Uh, we were one of the early adopters of convalescent plasma through our relationship with the Mayo Clinic Care Network. So in, you know, we're looking at now the monoclonal antibodies and looking to get involved in research around that. So uh, as we continue to learn and understand the pandemic virus, uh, we want to be part of the solution and part of the, the medical understanding and knowledge of that. So pretty excited to work for this organization and for you all. And I saw a question pop up too, on, and Mayor, you may want to address this too, but the question was that there is some fatigue among first responders and frontline caregivers in the hospital, caregiver fatigue. And are you seeing that and, and how are you uh, dealing with it from a city uh, leadership point of view? Uh, if they're tired, if our first responders are tired or our employees um, who have had to go beyond the call of duty during this pandemic, um, they're not griping. Um, they are um, very supportive of making sure that this community continues to run um, as it normally does um, and also that it's safe. So um, there is fatigue. I know there's mass fatigue. Uh, however, I'm not seeing it among the city employees. They're still very supportive and uh, still committed to making sure that they do their job with excellence. Well, thank you for that. And on, on the hospital side, John, and then we've got initiatives for physician wellness. And then we've done some things for the staff as well through our employee assistance uh, right. program. Yeah, so we have um, put extensive measures in place to, to identify and help with the uh, that burnout, you know, you hear about physician burnout, uh, all healthcare worker burnout is real, as well as community and first responders and anybody that has, this has added um, unprecedented levels of stress on our lives. And, uh, you know, our, our job really is to make sure that we look at the mental well being as well as the physical, and that's oftentimes more challenging. So um, we're committed to doing things to help our staff and our community whenever possible. Thank you for that. And, and John, I'll just say, you're absolutely right. There is um, undoubtedly um, stress that has gone um, to all of our employees. So I, I do know that because we do have healthcare systems and we do have support physicians and nurses um, and of course, good health um, initiatives, um, we continue to encourage that they stay mentally, physically, and spiritually strong. Thank you for that. And uh, I think we have another question too. Yeah, so the next question is in regards to the mask wearing campaign. So uh, folks know that you can get those at Naples Heroes, wearmask.com, but is there any other locations where businesses can get a supply of the masks that the city and HCH are offering? So yes, um, you can get on the websites that we talked about. You can also go to our central campus that's on uh, Pine Ridge Road and Naples Boulevard and walk in there and ask for the mask and you'll, be, you'll, you'll get those free of charge. So. Again, thank you to the city of Naples for partnering with us on that for all of Cuyahoga County, not just the city of Naples. And we're also a distribution site. So come visit us uh, at City Hall Great. and we'd be happy to provide you with masks, which the Naples Community Hospital has put um, the city logo and the Naples Community Hospital logo on the mask. And uh, we will be passing those out to businesses and restaurants along with posters um, so that this uh, All Heroes Wear a Mask uh, initiative continues because it's an education in initiative that needs to continue. So uh, we look forward to uh, passing out masks and posters uh, and making sure that the message is clear. Naples is safe, our businesses are safe, and we are here to support you in all your health needs in case you do, um, unfortunately, um, get ill from the virus. 
The masks are actually very stylish too. I don't yes, know whether you had anything are. to do in designing these, but they're quite nice. No, I, I haven't, but I, I get a lot of uh, compliments from these and people asking me for them. So good. Uh, Sean? Next question is this. Um, might the city council consider wearing the masks during their presentations? And is the city council intending on reopening the discussion of the merits of opting into the county mask ordinance? Uh, we do have partitions um, in between us um, when we are at the dais. And um, when we get up from the dais, we wear our mask um, throughout uh, the um, chambers. We are going to revisit the um, mandate that the county made, and that will be at a December, um, I think, third meeting. You can confirm that on the website, but we will be looking at um, that mandate from the county at that meeting. Thank you. Next question is, is it safe to return for season? Is it safe to come to the hospital? Well, we can still, well, uh, I think the short answer is yes. Um, as John mentioned, we've only had uh, two employees since the beginning of this pandemic uh, infected by a patient. We've only had one patient after, again, having treated thousands of patients that are COVID positive. So we have the negative pressure uh, rooms here. We've got the patients segregated. We've called it a hospital within a hospital to keep the other patients safe. We're taking extra precautions with the germ zapping robots, the masks and the other disinfectants. And our message, and I think I'll let the mayor speak to this too, we've said to folks, it's uh, fine and safe to come back to Naples for a season and we look forward to welcoming uh, folks back. That's right. Um, and uh, as John has stated, and so has uh, Mr. Hiltz, that we're moving forward on facts, not fear. And uh, this collaboration of safety is exactly what we were hoping for, that all heroes wear masks, Naples is safe, come back, enjoy us, enjoy the events, make sure you take those precautions because those are the necessary moves that we must continue to open up and be safe and continue to be safe. Thank you. And I would just add from, uh, from the hospital's perspective, uh, continue to offer all of our services. We have a very good um, pre-admission testing, which is any, any testings prior to uh, any procedures. We do our, our COVID-19 screenings, our PCR, the nasal swabs. Um, and if you do have a positive COVID result, we still take care of you in a, in a COVID-19 safe setting. So we have had zero um, patients get infected from any of our procedural areas. Um, there's more risk to ignoring your health care than to come into the health hospital for your uh, health care needs. So uh, we're here for you anytime. So regarding the vaccine, what will be the triggers for its use and how will it be prescribed and distributed? So um, I wish I could answer all those, wish we could answer all those questions, but um, it'd be hypothesizing on that. There's going to be the health and human services will identify what the protocols are. We know there'll be a phasing um, of the vaccine administration. Um, and just to really talk about it, as I stated before, we're prepared to pivot quickly and communicate as quickly with you all when we have information, but it would be uh, irresponsible to hypothesize on that right now. There, there. I, I think you said it, Kamal. Thank okay. you. So what is our current ICU bed availability and the plan for more if more are needed? So we have 50% of our ICU beds available today. Um, as I mentioned, um, ICU are not where our COVID patients are being cared for primarily today. So I, I think that won't be an issue as of right now. You know, kind of related to that, John, you and I met with our physician leaders earlier this week, and we did hear an interesting statistic, and I don't know the exact number, but we had a couple of patients, uh, several patients this month, uh, come into the emergency department who had driven themselves to the emergency department and who were having a heart attack. So again, with our, our partnership with the city, it is, if you're having an acute health care need, do not be shy about calling 911 and taking uh, that extra precaution to get yourself to a hospital uh, because uh, it's safe there too. 
Oh, that is so key. <laughs> um, saying that you're not going to the hospital because it's not safe is uh, nonsense. Uh, really listen to your body and uh, know that you have uh, the confidence in the leadership and in the physicians and the uh, nursing and staff that you will be taken care of um, in a safe fashion. Thank you for that. So last question. Many hospitals are experiencing first responder fatigue. Some are beginning to see staff availability as a problem. Is NCH seeing anything um, reminiscent or uh, similar to that here? So I would say, uh, let's call a spade a spade. Yes, staff are fatigued. However, what I'm really proud of is the fact that what we've done to help understand that fatigue and put measures in place to try to mitigate that. Paul mentioned the, the city's support from food and supplies and well wishes, flowers that really helped from the mental health perspective. Believe it or not, during this whole pandemic, our retention rate, which is how we measure people who stay in our organization, has improved. Although only 0.2%, that's still an improvement. So uh, we are, you know, we were fortunate that we had not had to rely on the agency staffing to support the volumes that we have today. And we're continuing to aggressively prepare for our upcoming season and then be here to care for our patients. So we feel pretty good today about what we've done as a, as a team. And the teamwork is really gonna keep us going through this and, and following the evidence-based practices. John, and people may have seen it in the newspaper, when you talk about fatigue factor and so forth, your team in the ICU uh, was just recently awarded and was recognized as being one of the top 250 critical care providers in the country. And that was done even in the middle of a global pandemic, which yes. is kind of amazing. So thank you for the leadership on that. Oh, it's, we're I'm privileged to work for that team uh, and for our organization. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, there's a 21% less chance of, of passing away in our ICUs from COVID than across the country. And that's because of the dedicated professionals, our critical care physicians, nurse practitioners, nurses, techs, really they do yeoman's work. And they, that really is the front line of COVID. You look at how this virus spreads through aerosolizing particles. So uh, that's pulmonary, and that's what they do every day. So really, thank you for recognizing that, Paul. And may, some people may not know, but your husband is one of our superstar doctors um, at NCH, and we're pleased and privileged to have him as one of the key caregivers here. Well, in Naples. thank you. Um, you know, this medical community um, has always been a community um, hospital community outreach. And I am very happy that this leadership, your leadership, along with your other CEOs and again, your staff, because that's who makes us who we are, but it's your leadership that brings the confidence and that safety to us. And I, and I hope that that continues because um, we are a community hospital and we really enjoy the partnership. Um, and whether it's COVID or moving forward, which is really what I hope we are going to do in moving forward, um, healthy community. Uh, I just look forward to those good practices and us um, being in partnership um, through good times and bad yes. times. So yes. thank you for being here for the community. Oh my gosh, thank you. As I say to our board, the more I, the longer I'm here, the more I appreciate longevity. <laughs> um, so we appreciate the partnership. Uh, we will get through it. We're not through it yet, but uh, I see, we do see some light at the end of the tunnel with the, the vaccination appearing to be very close. Uh, we'll continue. To, do we have any other questions? We have one more that happened to come okay. in. Um, this gentleman is asking if um, you would please speak to the use of a recently approved Lilly monoclonal antibody drug. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just talked about that this morning. Yeah, um, I mentioned really briefly. So we since the uh, president got the Regeneron, which is a monoclonal antibody study drug, several or about a couple month and a half or so ago, uh, Eli Lilly has released a, a similar monoclonal antibody drug uh, that for emergency use authorization. That is really the FDA term that's been released for use around with some restrictions. That has only been approved to use in the outpatient care settings. We have it available today and for our infusion centers and our physician practices. To have that ability to do that, but that is not for inpatients today. Now, as this, as science and, and the medical community progress their knowledge and, and therapies, uh, as always, it, when it's available for inpatients, we will be ready. 
I'd ask you to pronounce the name of that drug, but I think it's almost impossible. <laughs> That's good news. Um, so the, just a reminder that the Naples Heroes wear masks.com to get your masks. Uh, so please wear the mask. And if you need a mask, that's how you get one. And if you have any questions, you can certainly call our offices here at, or the mayor's office. Uh, so mayor, once again, we thank you for your leadership in this time of, of a global pandemic. Your leadership is making a big, big difference. We appreciate the partnership. John, you and your care teams at both mm -hmm. hospitals. And we'll plan on doing this again and have regular updates on the website, uh, but certainly open for questions. Uh, Mayor, any concluding comments? I would just say we are opening up. Uh, we are starting our special events. The events will be smaller. Uh, you we are still encouraging that you wear your mask, social distance, and practice good hygiene and go and enjoy what Naples has to offer because that's why you're here. Yes. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.